Okay, number one, we're going from a cold car to a warm house, so the temperature is going up. So if the temperature goes up, what we're going to find is that the volume also goes up. So I'll just draw an up arrow to mean that. Uh, which gas law does this illustrate? Well, that would be Charles's law. Uh, as the tires of your cars cool off, so the temperature is going down, what will that do to the pressure? Now, the thing to remember is that whatever temperature does, the pressure or volume will do the same thing. So since the temperature is going down, then it turns out that the pressure will go down as well. Now, which law does this illustrate? That would be Gay-Lussac's law. So I'll just put a GL for Gay-Lussac. Uh, let's try the next one here. A scuba diver holds her breath as she swims to the surface. Ooh, that's not a smart idea. What will happen to the volume of her lungs? Well, here's what happens. As she swims to the surface, the pressure is going to decrease or go down. And since pressure and volume do the opposite, what we should find then is that the volume of her lungs gets bigger. Uh, and that's not a good thing for you, and that's an illustration of Boyle's Law. All right, what happens to the pressure if the molecules of a gas are removed from a container? So less molecules makes less pressure, so it will go down. <clears throat> uh, what happens to the volume of a gas if the temperature is increased? Remember, whatever temperature does, the other one does the same thing. Since the temperature goes up, so does the volume. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. All right, number six says what happens to the temperature if pressure is decreased. Now remember, temperature always does the same thing as whatever it's associated with and vice versa. So therefore, if the pressure is going down, uh, then the temperature is also going to go down. Uh, what happens to the volume if pressure is increased? Now remember, volume and pressure are inverse of each other. They do the opposite. So if the, uh, uh, what happens to the volume if the pressure is increased? Well, then the volume is going to decrease because they'll always do the opposite of each other. All right, kids, here's, here we go, gas law problems. The trick to gas law problems is to look at what information you've been given to figure out which of the gas laws you need to use. So let's see what we've got here. We have a balloon that occupies milliliters measures volume. I'll just put a little V here. All right, and then we see that the temperature is 22, and that's temperature. So I have volume and temperature, and then it says how big. Well, how big something is, that's its volume uh, at a new temperature. So I'm going to have to use this equation here. But what I have to remember is that I cannot use Celsius in gas laws because only Kelvin's works uh, as far as doubling the temperature will double the volume. So I'm going to have to add 273 degrees to both this number and this number to convert them to Kelvins. So let's just go ahead and substitute in with that in mind. So this here is going to be V1. So 2400 zero, zero, divided by, now I'm going to take uh, the 22 degrees here, I'm going to add 273 to convert it to Kelvins, and when I do I'll get 295 equals V2 is what I'm looking for, and I'll divide it by T2, which is negative 36, but I have to add 273 to that to convert it to Kelvins, and that gives me 237. Now to solve this, I simply have to get V2 by itself, so that means since V2 is being divided by 237, I have to multiply both sides by 237, and when I get do that, I will get V2 equals 1928 milliliters. And that shouldn't surprise us. It got smaller because the temperature got smaller. All right, let's look at the next one. What I have is a cylinder of compressed air and a paintball gun. It starts off at this temperature and this pressure, and I want to know uh, what the temperature, well, uh, what the pressure is going to be if the temperature drops. So it looks to me like the equation we're dealing with here is, which is very similar to what we had up above. All right. So in this case, uh, I have to again remember that I have to convert the the temperatures in Celsius have to be converted to Kelvin by adding 273 degrees. So let's just start substituting in. Then what I get here is the initial pressure or P1 is going to be 6, 
and that is going to be divided by the T1, which is, uh, let's see, what's that? That's uh, 293. That's going to equal, uh, I wonder what the pressure is. What is P2? And the new temperature is uh, negative 30 plus 273 would be 243. Now what I have to do is I have to undo what's being done to P2. It's being divided by 243, so I have to multiply both sides by 243. And when I do that, what I'll find is that P2 is going to equal 4.97 atmospheres. And if I want to round for significant figures, well, that'd be five atmospheres. All right, let's just move this on up and take a look at number 10. All right, so in this case, I have a milliliters, that's volume, and tors is air pressure. Uh, so I have, in this case, volume and pressure. Uh, and at the top of Mount Everest, the pressure is this. So how big is volume? So it looks to me like the, we have pressure and volume and pressure and volume. That's Boyle's Law. The equation for Boyle's Law is P1V1 equals P2V2. So let's substitute into this and see what we get. So uh, the P1 is 760 times the V1 was 3,500 milliliters. Now that equals the P2 of 270, uh, and that's going to be times uh, V2. Now what we find is, since the pressure went down, we should expect the volume to get larger. Let's see what happens here. I have to solve this. What I have to do is, I have to undo what's being done to V2. Currently it's being multiplied by 270, therefore I have to divide this side and this side by 270. And when I divide both sides by 270, what I get is this, that V2 equals uh, 9,900 milliliters. Hey look, it got bigger just like we predicted. Let's try number 11. In number 11 what we have is a screwdriver checks your air tanks at the shore. The temperature of the tank is 25 and the pressure is here. So we have temperature and pressure and what we want to know is the pressure at a new temperature. So this is going to be P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Let me write that down. Okay, do I need to caution you again? You cannot leave Celsius as Celsius. You have to add 273 and convert it to Kelvins or you're going to get it wrong. So let's just try here. P1, the starting pressure here is uh, 3,200 pounds per square inch divided by, well, 25 plus 273 is 298 Kelvins. That's going to equal P2 over 8 degrees Celsius, I have to add 273, so that gives me 281. And so I have to undo what's being done to P2, it's being divided by 281, so I have to multiply by 281. So if I multiply by 281, what I'll get is that P2 equals 3,000 pounds per square inch PSI. All right, and finally number 12. This isn't so bad, is it? Number 12, let's see what we've got. Ooh, a scuba diver with an air embolism. That is not good. Uh, let's see, and she is placed in a uh, hyperbaric chamber. So the pressure is going to change from P1 to P2. What will this do to the size? Read that volume. If this is the, what it started out is, so this is V1. Uh, so it looks to me like we need to use the Boyle's Law equation, which is right here. So once again, we just have to substitute in. So let's see, the P1 is 1.08 atmospheres times V1 was a mere 0 0.00246 milliliters. And that's going to equal uh, the P2, which is 17.77 times the V2. 
Now to get V2 by itself, I have to undo what's being done to it. It's currently being multiplied by 17.77, so I need to divide both sides by 17.77. And when I do, what I'll get is a very small volume. V2 is going to equal 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4 milliliters. Good job doing your homework, everybody.